Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to be looking at some very beginner friendly modeling tips in Maya. We are assuming here that you're quite new to it, you know, maybe you just got started or you're in your first weeks or so. Though if you are more advanced, you know, it's always worth sticking around because I'm sure there are some nice little tips and tricks you didn't know about. Or, or like for some reason, if you just want to listen to us, you can totally stick around. But <laughs> if you if you've done modeling for some time, uh, you'll probably be familiar with some of these. Yeah. But maybe there's like one you don't know. Yes. So the first one we are going to be looking into. This isn't so much a modeling feature in Maya, but this here is more like a modeling fundamental. I remember this is something you've been talking about, Morton, when you had started off with three D. It was like mm. I need the three key. <laughs> and it's so soft. How do I make it not soft? How do you make this sharp? And for anyone who's been doing modeling for some time, this is quite obvious. But in the beginning, this is one of these things that is just not obvious. If you add a loop here, we're using the multicut tool. And then if you hold on the control key, you can now add a loop to it. And the closer this loop is added to the edge, the sharper it is going to be. Yeah, I remember I was doing a, a old tutorial on tutorialize.com. Uh, how to model a scotch glass and I was following the tutorial one to one and it was great and then I was like okay I'll try to do it from memory and when I did it from memory I totally forgot that you had to add loops mm. to get the hardness so I just had this soft glass yeah because that was a memory thing you didn't yeah. understand it so if you want the, this here to be sharp you are going to have to add loops in a pattern like this and now you can see you get nice sharpness here and if you want to make this sharper or smoother now you select the loops. You can do this in subdivision mode or in regular mode. You mm. toggle between hitting one and three, and you can just move it down. Now you can see it gets, the further down it gets, the smoother the surface gets, and uh, the higher up it, it gets, the sharper it's going to be. So one thing we should probably note here is that um, don't model in in the smooth no. mode. Like, as, as you see here, like if you start to move this edge up, at some point it starts to go above, even though it looks like it's still beneath. Yeah, it's here, uh, but it's above. But if you go into the unsmooth view, you can see you've actually pushed above the the top surface there. So it's, I don't know, maybe some people, I guess some people do it, but um, I would advise against it. Yeah, I would highly recommend that you, you work in this mode and then you check your models like this. So yeah. Whenever you're doing this, you know, you just go between one and the three key. It's pretty quick. Handy. And if you want to see the cage, what it looks like, you can hit the two key as well. A nice little uh, bonus tip for you is if you hold down shift and middle mouse button and you drag up and down, now you can move stuff around without actually hitting the, the manipulator. This is how I move stuff around. Mm. So if you want to, you know, move this up, you don't actually have to click here and drag it up. Just shift, middle mouse button, drag up and down. And this works for everything. This works for rotation, scaling in edge mode, poly mode, in object mode, whatever it might be. Yeah. So I think Maya stores the last uh, axis that you used, um, but then you can sort of like, like sometimes, I don't know, for me, maybe sometimes it's a little iffy to get it to switch axis. Mm. Maybe I'm just retarded, I don't know. <laughs> but it's, it's a pretty handy way of, of moving stuff constrained to axis. The next tip is moving the pivot. This is one of these things I really like about Maya, where you can move the pivot very easily. So the pivot is this little guy here where you can move stuff around. Now this becomes handy if you want to, you maybe want to snap something together. Let's duplicate this guy, control D, and now we can move it around. And let's say you want to snap this point to this point. Now, of course, you could just move it up here and kind of hope that it works. <laughs> but what you can do, you can move the manipulator down here and then you can snap it to this. So the way we do this, if we hold down the D key and you hold in the D key, you can now just click on where you want to go. It's very, very handy. You can also hit um, the insert key and that now you can just click without holding down a D key and then just hit insert again. Yeah. So that's like a pivot moving mode. Well, D key is more like a snappy key mode. It's like a quick pivot. Exactly. So now you can click the, the pivot you want, just move it there. And then you can hold down the V key now, V for vert. And now you can just drag it where you want it to be. So now you can very easily snap this to a point like this. This is honestly one of my favorite features of modeling in Maya. Yeah. It's snapping and moving the manipulator, it's so handy. You have other modes as well. For example, if you hold down X, that'll snap it to the grid instead. So you can snap it really easily to the grid. You can hold on C for a snap to a curve yeah. or an edge, which is defined as a curve. So quite useful stuff. Where this also becomes handy is, let's say we have, just a quick extrude this and move this up. So now we have a, we have a, an edge like this, which is an, an angle. Let's say we want to keep extruding this out like this. 
what we could do is we could uh, move the manipulator now. If you go into the move mode by hitting the W key, hit the D key and click on the edge. And now you can see that now it snaps perfectly to the edge. Mm. This is incredibly intuitive. So you, you simply just click the, the one you want to snap it to, or you want to align it to. So just click the point or the edge or whatever it is you want to. If you click the poly, it's going to move to the middle of it. Yeah, like the like pivot manipulation is quite powerful. Yeah. And it's it's an amazing feature in, in Maya, I think. It really is. Next up, we are going to be looking into marking menus. Just hit the delete key for this. Marking menus in Maya is something we have covered before, but it's one of these features which is so powerful. Whenever we see people starting modeling in Maya, they're going to go up here and they're going to click the things and then they go into edit mesh and they're going to do, you know, they're going here and then they're going extrude. And, you know, I don't even know where these live because this is like <laughs> yeah. the second time in my life I'm actually using this. If your teacher still does this, uh, yeah, ask yeah. him about that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your teacher shouldn't do that. No. The way you would I model for speed in Maya is you shouldn't really be in any of these menus when it comes to it. You could. But the fastest way is if you hold on the shift key and right mouse button, you get access to this marking menu. And here you have all the, the primitives you need. So if you want to make a cube, you just make a cube and then it pops up. This is so fast that you, you don't even have to open the menu. You can just go shift right mouse button and drag down. Mm. And once you get like an in intuitive understanding of where stuff lives, it, it gets pretty quick to model. Because you can do this with modifiers, well, like um, things on top of your meshes as well. It's not just creating meshes. So if you were watching any modeling tutorials from somebody who's, uh, which is not a pure beginner video, mm. and you just see that suddenly somebody's doing this, and you have no idea what's going on, yeah, <laughs> that's because they are using marking menus and they know how to use them. So marking menus are used for more than just creating things. They're context sensitive, which means that if you have, if nothing is selected, you are going to be creating things. If you are selecting something now you're getting more object oriented tools yeah. such as what do you want to do to the whole thing maybe you want to smooth it or you know you want to sculpt on it or fill holes whatever it might be you have all the tools here the most common ones are down or around here and if you're in edge mode you get different tools so for instance if you want to extrude this you can just extrude it up and now we create a horrible geometry <laughs> don't worry about that you want to delete something you can uh, the delete key. <laughs> the delete key. <laughs> or you can uh, be in, in edge mode and you can shift right mouse button and do delete and that deletes that. Yeah. I, I prefer that because otherwise I gotta move my hand all over to delete key. Yeah, exactly. Which is I'm lazy and it's at least thirty centimeters to move my hand. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> one millisecond saved. You know, it that. adds up when you do a lot of modeling. It really does. And also it makes your it makes it more ergonomical. Yeah. So if you're if you keep modeling all the time, you want to move your your body as little as possible. Mm. And one I use all the time is extrude. Just shift right mouse button down to extrude. And there we have it. So the way you practically do this is move down. And now you can just keep moving it up, rotating it, scaling it, whatever it is. So marking menus, absolute must have. So experiment with it. Shift right mouse button, go into edge mode, poly mode, you know, all of them. Yeah. And try them out. Do, uh, was it Autodesk that had like a patent or something on marking menus? Oh yeah, they had a... I is, think this, it might, is that still there? I think it might have expired. It's the patent is that uh, they, a marking menu opens up another marking menu like this. Oh, which means that, uh, for instance, if you're, a, if you're a developer for Moto and you want to add marking menus, you are now very mad at Autodesk. <laughs> you're shaking your fist at the sky. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> Oh yeah, just a little random bit of information there. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the multi-cut tool. The multi-cut tool is really, really powerful. This is a tool you are going to be using a lot for a bunch of different things. So one of the most useful things here is uh, that, well, two main things. First is you can cut things, hence the name multi-cut. But it does so much more. So it does so much more. <laughs> you can add loops to it. If you hold on control key, now you're adding loops like we did before. Yeah. This is a really powerful tool. If you hold on the shift key, it's going to snap at uh, whatever percentage you might be, like 15% 15, 15 or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, if you hold on the middle mouse button, it's going to insert a loop in the middle of it. Which is really handy because sometimes the snapping, if you hold down shift, can be quite annoying to yeah. figure out where exactly is the 50% mark. So so being able to just get it exactly 50% is, is pretty quick like that. This is a tool I'm sitting with most of my day when I'm sitting doing modeling. Yeah. It's really handy. And then we have the cutting. The cutting is really 
where if you want real, very precise control. This is something you want to do a lot when you're doing general poly modeling. Let's say you just want to do this cut here. You just click where you want to be, and then you hit the right mouse button to cancel it. See, that's that's a super pro tip, the right mouse button yeah. thing, because like you can also do it with enter, but then you have to move your hand, get up, and then you like pause the action. The right mouse button just means that you can just keep, you know, it's, it's pretty efficient like that. It is one of these smaller things which really adds up to it. I, I used to switch to another tool, so I used to do this into Q key. Ah, uh, yeah. And then I would go back into it and do this. Really annoying. Really annoying. You can also access it by, uh, again, shift right mouse button in edit mode. Oh, sorry, in object mode. And now you go to multicut, and here you have it here. This is honestly one of my favorite tools in Maya. I think it's a really, really good tool. Yeah. You can also cut internally as well within Maya, which is really useful. You didn't used to be able to do this in Maya, <laughs> which the way you would do it was it was so miserable. I remember I had discussions with people about that, being able to internally cut, and they're like, why would you ever do that? Yeah. I said, all the time. You would do like <laughs> this, and then you would add a cut like this to yeah, it. it was a nightmare. And then you would move this down like this, and you're like, ta-da. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. So multi-cut, one of the most awesome tools there is. Yeah, it's it's just such a handy tool, and it's, it's come a long way, yeah. you know? It originated from, I don't know, another cut tool and became multi-cut and multi-cut was bad for like many years but it's actually one of the i think one of the most solid tools in maya now yeah at some point we had three cutting tools yeah it was pretty bad then next up the last tip this is related to using marking menus but this is specific how you can change segments to stuff so this here is let's say we're using the connect tool nice little tip as well for you the connect tool let's just move this guy up so you can see what we're doing if you hit an uh, just an edge and you hit the connect tool, now you can see that this moves, this adds a loop throughout the entire thing. Mm. You don't actually have to use the, um, the multi-cut tool. The, the advantage of this tool is that you can add multiple um, loops to it. So if you now hold down Control, Shift, and right mouse button, so it takes a bit of getting used to it, but once <laughs> it's there, then you're, then you're used to it. Now you, this opens up a separate marking menu where by default, this is gonna be set to segments. So now if you hit the middle mouse button and drag, now it's going to add multiple segments to it. Yeah, so it's important to note that the green line here just represents uh, potential uh, loops. These aren't actually committed yet, yeah. so that's why you can keep editing it. Exactly. It's really useful. So you can control shift right mouse button for a bunch of these tools will keep adding segments to it. Mm. You can also here add the pinch to it, which is going to pinch it to either end. This is incredibly useful when it comes to hard surface modeling. Because yeah. now you can you know, change the amount of segments. You want this, maybe you just want two. Set it to pinch, and now you can add them symmetrically. And you can see all of this happens down in the connect options under the connect tool, but now there's no need to actually go into the modeling toolkit to edit this. Yeah, exactly. It's like you can go up here and set this to like expert mode. Yeah. And now you can really model efficiently like this. And then we just hit the enter key, and uh, we, we have now added multiple segments to mm. this. So these are some of our top five tips for people who wants to get started with modeling in Maya. We hope this year has been useful. Yeah. And um, if you have any cool modeling tips or anything you struggle with when you were a beginner, let us know. And we'd love to cover this for, for people who might still be struggling with this. Yeah. So uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also turn on notifications by hitting the little notification bell so you get notified every time we put out a new video. Thanks for watching.